Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Friday the 13th webinar on how to apply to America's Seed Fund at NSF. My name is Henry Ahn. I'm one of the program directors here for the SBIR STTR program. In spite of what you may have heard, there is nothing scary about applying for SBIR. Uh, but there is a lot of information to work with, and I hope this webinar will help you clarify things and make the application process a little smoother. If you miss any portion of today's webinar, it will be recorded and available to you within a week or two, uh, so you can come back and listen to it again if you choose to. Only the presentation portion will be available to you, so record, uh, and the recording will not include the Q&As. Uh, so don't be afraid to ask questions at the end of the webinar. Also, there is another webinar on what is America's Seed Fund at NSF that my colleague Anna gave a few weeks ago. It is available on our YouTube channel now, so if you missed it, please go back and watch it. It has a lot of useful information that is specific to our SBIR and STTR program. Uh, this is our home page. Uh, this should be familiar to many of you. You can get there by typing seedfund.nsf.gov. We'll be going through various parts of this website today, so let's go to the live website. So if you click on Apply Now, it brings you uh, to, to our timeline. But actually, before we get to this, I want to mention one thing, because I'm a little worried. I think there's a good chance that many of you will miss the deadline in June. And we certainly hope that that's not the case, but unfortunately, I think it will happen to some of you. So prevent that from happening. I would like to ask you to do one thing right after this webinar. If you haven't registered with SAM, or also known as System Award for Management, please do so as soon as you can, right after this web webinar. It's free to register, but you need to be registered before you can work on your SBIR application. Recent changes in SAM registration process requires a notarized letter from all new registrants, and each of these letters have to be reviewed by SAM. Uh, this is required, and this can add time to the registration process. In the past, we did allow companies to work on their application after sending information to SAM, but the recent changes to the NSF process also required that all SAM registration be completed prior to being able to start working on your application on our website. This, this means you can't even start your application process without the SAM registration, and SAM registration can take weeks. So before you do anything, please register your company with SAM. So other than registering your company with SAM and checking to make sure that your company meets SBIR or SCTR requirements, the first step is submitting your executive summary and receiving pre-submission feedback. This step is optional, but it is recommended. The purpose of this is to give you some high-level feedback on program fit. We're not reviewing at this point, so there is no need to include any in-depth technical details, and you should not include any proprietary information. The executive summary should be one to two pages long, and it should include information such as your company name, your team, specific market opportunity, value proposition, intended customers, the innovation in the technology, the competition, and the technical work that the company is trying to achieve with this project. If you have multiple products in mind, uh, you should go with whichever you believe has the best market potential and help you succeed as a for-profit company. If you're not sure about the best market opportunity, we recommend that you go through a customer discovery exercise like i to help you understand the customer's needs and demand. Please keep in mind that submitting multiple executive summary to multiple program directors don't necessarily work to your advantage. Actually, we don't really like it, like this, <laughs> like it <laughs> when you do that. So please submit just one executive summary to the topic that you, you believe is the best fit. If you have specific questions, our contact information can be found on our website, 
so we would strongly encourage you to email us directly. The best way to get to the contacts is by clicking on contact up here. And we're all listed here along with our pictures and the topics that we cover. Okay, so let's go back to the timeline. So we have links to our SBIR and SCTR solicitation here. And you definitely need to review the solicitation very carefully when you start preparing your full proposal. These links go live about 90 days before the deadline, and the links become disabled after the deadline. We provide detailed proposal guideline in the solicitation, so it is important to follow that guideline and make sure that you include all the information that we ask. We do tweak these solicitations each review cycle, so if you have a printout of a past solicitation, you may want to come back and use the latest one. Lastly, we do have separate solicitations for SBIR and STTR, but other than a few requirements, they are virtually identical, and we do treat them the same way when we review the proposals. And next step in the process is registering your company. There are four different places that companies have to register uh, before starting. So we don't make it any easier for you, but the current registration process does require you to do this in four different places. We talked about SAM, and again, this should be done first. It says up to three weeks, but with the recent changes that I talked about earlier, this can take much longer. Three other places are done, research.gov and SBIR company registry. The process time for these three other places are relatively quick. And finally, after you've done that, you can start your application uh, on our Fastlane website. Our Fastlane uh, is linked to research.gov, so you don't have to get a separate login for Fastlane. You can just use the same login as research.gov, and research.gov is where you, well, research.gov is where you register the company, and Fastlane is where you work on your proposal and submit it. I believe these two websites are linked, so you can still get to Fastlane through research.gov. So when you get a chance, log into Fastlane and look around and familiarize yourself with various fields within this website. But keep in mind that you can't even log into the system without the SAM registration. So again, I want to emphasize that SAM registration is important, and you need to do this now if you haven't done so already. The applications are due by 5 p.m. your local time, and it may take us up to five months before we have the decision on funding. There is one other place that is very important for applicants. Under resources for applicants, there are some important links that will be helpful as you prepare your application. Review guidelines link has all the review criteria that we provide our reviewers. This guideline also went through a revision recently, and this is the guideline that we provide our reviewers before they start reviewing your application. I think going through these criteria will probably help you put together a stronger proposal. This covers intellectual merit, broader impact, and commercial impact. I'll click on it to see where it lands. So these are all the questions. And I'll go back to the previous page. So uh, these categories, intellectual merit, broader impact, and commercial impact, may be a little confusing, but the details provided within the category should be clear and all the questions that we provide. Q&A webinars is where you will find links to various webinars and register for future Q&A sessions that we'll be hosting. A link to Program Basics, 
leads to the webinar that my colleague Anna gave on what is America Seed Fund at NSF. And the link to what you need to know before applying is where you will find this current webinar in about a week or two. If you find that our fast lane uh, uh, to submit your application is a little confusing, we do provide additional guideline here under fast lane guideline. Fast lane guide. And I'll go to that page quickly to show you what the page looks like. And then I'll go back. There's actually a lot of information to go through. So this includes step-by-step -step guideline as well as screenshots of various application pages. So this will help you navigate through our system. The FAQ link has many questions related to SBIR and SGTR that we received over the years along with our detailed answers. I know many of you will probably have your questions answered today, but this section will probably have answers to some of the questions that you might have as you go through the process. So come back to it and look at some of these questions, and there are some important answers for you as well. So let's go back to the slides. So just to remind people of some of the important links, again, this page, this right here, is where you would find all the important links that, that I just went over. And here are the links to our SBIR and SCTR solicitation. The URL is long, but as you saw earlier, there is an easier way to get there from the timeline on our website. Two other important links, our YouTube channel, where, you, where we keep all of our recorded webinars, and a link to other SBIR, STTR programs. This last link is on SBIR and STTR, is, is on SBIR.gov, oops, and has a list of all the open solicitations for SBIRs and STTRs from NSF, as well as other federal agencies. Some important reminders and advice. Remember to use a timeline on our website to make sure that you hit every point along the review process. Remember, research.gov and Fastlane are linked. You have to register your company through research.gov, but you prepare and submit your proposal through Fastlane. We fund a lot of companies. We funded about 2,000 companies in, in the past six years or so. Uh, so ask around and talk to them. These companies can probably give you some tips that will be helpful, especially the ones that received our funding. Our fast lane system may not be an easy system to work with, and we do recognize that. There have been some discussion to implement another solution, but we're not quite there yet. Hopefully our Fastlane guide on our website will help you uh, as you go through the process, but if you get stuck or have technical issues, don't be afraid to call our Fastlane help desk. Their number is 1-800-673-6188. Lastly, start early. I talked about the importance of SAM registration. Please do this today if you haven't done so already. I can't emphasize this enough. The deadline is 5 p.m. based on your company's time zone, the deadline for the proposal. After 5 p.m., you will not be able to submit your proposal. Our system, Fastlane, will not allow any submission after 5 p.m. Unfortunately, we have companies that fail to meet that 5 p.m. deadline just about every review cycle. I think the best practice is to try to get everything submitted at least a day before the deadline. That way, you have, if you do encounter any issues, there is someone here to help you and get your proposal submitted on time. Thank you. That's all I have today. That concludes today's webinar.